So our story really centered on the first ever interview with the Dread Pirate Roberts, the owner and uh, manager of the Silk Road, which is the world's most popular online black market for drugs. And the Silk Road uses tools like uh, the anonymity software Tor and the mostly untraceable uh, cryptocurrency called Bitcoin to allow anybody to buy any drug imaginable. For a long time, the Silk Road was the only website that had this business model, but, but other people are now starting to copy what the Silk Road created. And there's now another site called Atlantis and a third one called Black Market Reloaded. So the, the existence of the Silk Road is, is no secret now, but nobody had ever spoken with the founder of the site. And that was really the, the goal of our story, was to bring out the character behind this business. But we also wanted to make the business itself real for people, to make it, make it clear that, you that consumers really can buy illegal drugs off the internet. So Forbes purchased one gram or less of marijuana from all three sites to see what would happen. And we found that they do work, more or less. We just bought tiny amounts of marijuana, but you can also buy large quantities of heroin and cocaine. Uh, a lot of dealers actually wholesale from the Silk Road and then seem to sell you know, on the streets. There's no doubt that there's a big drug enforcement agency crosshairs on the back of the Dread Pirate Roberts and Silk Road. There are some signs that law enforcement is having some success in tightening the net around this new industry. They have caught two dealers, one in South Carolina, one in Australia. They've started to regulate Bitcoin more closely. The main Bitcoin exchange, Mt. Gox, now requires that you show identity if you want to trade in traditional currency for Bitcoins, which could present a really big problem for people who want to use it in this totally black market fashion. If the Silk Road continues and the Dread Pirate Roberts isn't arrested, I think what this shows is not just that anybody can just score drugs online, but it also shows that there are, there are kind of bubbles on the internet where even the massive surveillance powers of the state seem like they still haven't penetrated. There are these kind of anarchic realms with no regulation where the law simply doesn't apply. And that's what the Dread Pirate Roberts wanted to create. And I think that we showed that he has succeeded to some extent. The point of the story was to show that these marketplaces exist and that people are, in fact, buying and selling these goods. And it was important to us to make sure um, that the public is aware that we didn't consume the goods and that we dispose of them properly.